Hi, this is Sean Carney, the President and CEO of 40 Days for Life. It is with a very heavy heart that I come and share the loss of a, of a dear friend who was not only a, an important part of the 40 Days for Life national team, but somebody who was an important part of the entire pro-life movement and around the world. And that is the loss of my dear friend, Sue Thayer. I first met Sue in 2009, and the occasion was a glorious one because she had managed a Planned Parenthood and worked at Planned Parenthood for 17 years. And she became the first and only a Planned Parenthood manager to ever have a conversion, leave that industry, and then lead a 40 Days for Life campaign uh, outside of her former workplace. And in 2009, that facility in Storm Lake, Iowa, where she managed for so many years, closed. And I met Sue in the snow uh, at that celebration rally and it kicked off a beautiful and wonderful friendship where I got to know her like so many of you have gotten to know her over the years. Her joy, her love of her family, and her passion to end abortion after being part of the abortion industry for 17 years. In 2018, I hired Sue to be the director of outreach for 40 Days for Life to encourage and help our local leaders end abortion where they live. Sue is irreplaceable for 40 Days for Life. The local leaders absolutely fell in love with her. Her countless phone calls, her texts, her emails exuded joy. Sue's disposition for anybody who ever knew it, knew her, was, was one of joy and somebody who loved life and had seen the evil of abortion and the abortion industry firsthand. But she wasn't bitter. She wasn't mad. She was clearly somebody who had embraced the beautiful mercy of Jesus Christ that poured out of Calvary. And that is the ultimate story and celebration as we celebrate her life over the coming weeks and months and we talk about the many stories uh, that we have with Sue Thayer. It is her love of the gospel that I will always remember. She didn't sugarcoat her time at Planned Parenthood. She addressed thousands of audiences as a, as a member of the pro-life movement. She spoke at pregnancy center dinners. She spoke at all the 40 Days for Life uh, vigils. She spoke at 40 Days for Life symposiums, and she never sugarcoated what she saw or what she was part of. But you could see our Lord in Sue. You could see that he had healed her, that she was broken and he had put her back together and was using her for a greater good. And that, that the joy that came from that was in every aspect of, of Sue Thayer. Uh, I'll never forget the first time she came to our headquarters as a member of the 40 Days for Life team. It's the now closed Planned Parenthood abortion facility. And she just walked around that building with a huge smile <laughs> on her face. And after being there an hour, I stopped her and I said, Sue, are you, are you enjoying yourself? And she said, I love this place. This is like pro-life Disneyland. And she was just like a little kid in everything that she did for 40 Days for Life. She absolutely loved the pro-life movement. She loved all of you. My favorite memory with Sue Thayer was when we were together at the March for Life uh, shortly after she joined our national team. And I got her a pass to join me behind the stage at the March for Life and introduced her to a lot of people and, and she just wanted to share her story with everyone she met. But she insisted on making her own sign to wear around her neck. And the sign said, I used to work at Planned Parenthood and now I work at 40 Days for Life. And I remember walking around the March for Life with Sue and we saw people that agree with us and are pro-life and people who, who aren't and support abortion. And they all would all stop and kind of read Sue's sign and look up at her uh, as if she were a walking miracle. And that was the time that I realized after knowing her for, for 10 years at the time, that her life really was a, a walking miracle. And that's what we need to remember now that she has gone from this world to the next. As sudden and as hard as her, her passing is, not just for me personally, but for, for all of you out there in the pro-life movement, it did feel sudden since she got diagnosed with cancer and, and her death did feel sudden. But in the scheme of her life, uh, it's not. It is a, her life is a beautiful testament because none of us should have ever known her. 
She worked at Planned Parenthood for 17 years. She was participating in this horrible uh, business of abortion. And by the grace of God, he got her out of there. And no one knew that more than Sue. And no one wanted to share that more than Sue. And that was represented by that sign that she wore at the March for Life. It was represented by everything that she did. She wanted people to know the joy and the love of Jesus Christ. And after spending just a few minutes with her, you could see that. It was not something that was just on the surface. It was at her core. And she had an intense passion to end abortion because she had an intense passion passionate love for Jesus Christ and what he did for her in getting her out of Planned Parenthood and how he used her for the greater glory of God. I just feel so blessed that God put Sue in my life. I feel very blessed that she was part of 40 Days for Life and spent so much time. We sent her around the world. We sent her across the country. And, and I feel blessed that she had uh, so much time, not just with our leaders, but, but also with, with her family, her, her biological children, her adopted children, who she always talked about and, and who loved her, who loved her so dearly, and she loved them. Her life was a beautiful witness to the gospel of life. And so over the coming weeks and months as we uh, as we celebrate her life and we share uh, some of the many great uh, quotes and and speeches and podcasts that Sue was on where you could just you could you could hear her love uh, for the pro-life movement and you could hear her confidence that God would end abortion in the United States and around the world we will be sharing those we will be uh, celebrating her life but right now i want to encourage all of you to pray for her children during this very very difficult time to pray for uh, all of her family and to know that her life uh, should be an inspiration uh, to, to all of us to live for every moment and, and and to live for god and to know that but by the grace of God, there go I. That's how she viewed every woman who was going in for an abortion. That's how she certainly viewed every uh, abortion worker because she was one. And she never lost hope in the great injustice of abortion uh, ending because she never lost hope in the joy and the mercy and the truth of Jesus Christ. And so this is a great time to be thankful for her life, to pray for her family and to uh, know that God put her here uh, for a reason. He put her here to show his love for all of you, to show his love for the unborn, and to remind us all that he is a loving father in heaven. And so, Sue, we love you. We love your family. We will be praying uh, for uh, all of Sue Thayer's uh, children. I want to encourage everybody else to be praying for her children and be grateful that God used her life for His greater glory. My name is Sue Thayer, and I'm from Storm Lake, Iowa. I was the center manager at the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Storm Lake for just short of 18 years. Planned Parenthood started um, doing something called webcam abortion, and that is a chemical or medication abortion that's done with no doctor in the clinic at all. And so a woman would come in and non-medical staff like myself and my clinic assistants would do a vaginal ultrasound um, to determine how far along uh, the baby was. And then if it was 70 days or less, uh, our doctor could push a button on her computer screen that would pop open this drawer at our center and then the doctor would watch via a computer connection while the woman took the pills um, that started the abortion. And so I knew that was a bad thing. Um, I finally decided in my heart that I was never going to do that. And I told my employer that that was wrong and that we should not be doing that. Abortion, surgical abortion was bad enough. But now here we were going to be doing these other horrible things. And um, so I kind of spoke up against it and, and uh, shared my thoughts on it and what a bad idea it was and how many women were going to be hurt by that. Um, and then I ended up getting fired. 
I thought, you know, I've done my part, I, I'm out of there, and I'm just going to let this go. I wouldn't even drive down the street, you know, where, where the abortion facility was in Storm Lake. And that really worked well for me for quite a while. But then, you know, God just kept nudging me that you haven't really spoken up enough. Um, so we're in this, this small meeting, and, and I shared about webcam abortion, and, and somebody said, well, what are we going to do? And I, I'm kind of sitting there, and I said, well, you know, there's something called 40 Days for Life. Having worked there, I know that uh, Planned Parenthood does not like 40 Days for Life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you know that, Sean and David? <laughs> they call it right. 40 Days of Torture or 40 Days of Harassment right. or 40 Days, well, I won't say the rest of it. Right, it's right. not a big word, but um, they do not like it. And so I thought, well, if Planned Parenthood doesn't like it, that's probably a good place to start. And so that's kind of how the idea, you know, was born. And um, having had no pro-life presence in Storm Lake, it was really a big step of faith to even think about doing something like that. And so I'm trying to put the prayer vigil hours in the computer, and I'm technologically challenged, and I can't get it, and I'm getting very frustrated. And because I was the contact person, you know, there's training modules and all this stuff, and I'm thinking, Lord, I'm in over my head, and I can't do this. So I end up calling the 40 Days for Life number, and I get this really nice lady named Lauren. And Lauren doesn't know me and I don't know her, but I'm like, Lauren, we're trying to do this first 40 Days for Life campaign and I can't even get the hours in the computer and I'm just like frantic. And she said, okay, let me help y'all walk you through it. And you know, what hours are you going to do it? And I said, well, we're going to do it 15 hours a week on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday afternoons. And there's kind of a silence there. And she goes, um, why are you only going to do it 15 hours? So I launch into my list of reasons. Well, we're in rural Iowa, and there's nobody here, and we don't have a pro-life group, and there's not even that many people in Storm Lake to do, you know, a big vigil. And she said, well, you know, a lot of the bigger places do 24 hours a day, but, you know, maybe you should try for 12 hours a day. And I said, oh, it will never work. You know, it's going to be a horrible failure. And what Lauren uh, said to me next really set me on a different path. She said in this small, quiet voice, Sue, why would you want to limit God? I mean, even to that point, I'm arguing with God. Like, you know, God, I, I did all this, and I, I got this 40 days for life going, and, you know, surely you're not going to make me go down there and stand on the sidewalk where I worked and pray. How embarrassing is that? And when I have to face my former co-workers, you know, Please, God, not that. Could I just sit in my van and pray? Because a prayer is a prayer, right? And if I'm in my van, it's the same as being on the sidewalk. And it wasn't an audible voice, but it was clearly God's voice saying, get out and get going. So I did and um, prayed on the sidewalk. And, you know, I, my daughter um, was just a baby, my littlest one at the time. And, I mean, I used that as an excuse to, like, you know, I can't take the baby out there because it's too cold. But I would wrap her up, and we would, she'd be in her stroller. And, um, you know, I can honestly say during that 40 days, I spent more time with God one-on-one -on -one, than I ever have in my entire life. And um, it blessed me in a profound way, more than I can even say. And, um, you know, I know it was a blessing to the workers there. And they would be angry when they'd come, and I'd be sitting there in the morning, um, but I always had a smile and, you know, how you doing today? And, and um, it wasn't awkward, you know, it was good. And I knew for the first time really in my life, I was where I was supposed to be. And, um, you know, the 40 days passed and by God's grace, there was not an hour that wasn't filled. I remember very well the day that our Planned Parenthood here in Storm Lake, Iowa closed. A friend called me up and said, hey, did you hear the news? And we had just completed our first ever 40 Days for Life campaign outside uh, of the place that I used to work. And to hear that it was going to close, I was just stunned. For me to have worked here all those years and uh, then to be standing in front and to have gone through the 40 days and and to now be you know, a pro-life advocate that's um, sharing uh, about telemed abortion really all over the state and country. Um, as I'm led and it's just it, I said it gives new meaning to the word miracle and of course that's what we prayed for um, for 480 hours in front of Planned Parenthood was that it would close but yet when it happened I was absolutely stunned 
So I remember thinking this is too good to be true. And we ended up having this great party um, in Iowa in the dead of winter celebrating our the Planned Parenthood facility closing. But what a great day it was. Stunning to me that God heard and answered our prayers. And I can tell you that if he did that for us here, he can do that uh, anywhere. We were number 21 that closed after 40 days for life. And truly, you know, if you can come out of the abortion industry and not just survive it, but actually be redeemed and have just a God experience and have your heart be transformed and changed, you know, it's just proof to the fact that we serve a big God. He can forgive anybody and anything. And, and um, I'm just so excited to be able to, to share that with other workers that are coming out and um, trying to help them, you know, get their feet on the ground and understand that there is life after the abortion industry. And I share this story with you because what God did for us here in Iowa, he will do for you there, wherever you are, because he sees you, he hears your prayers, he knows your heart for life, and he is on our side. God created each and every one of us. He created the tiny babies in the wombs of the moms that are seeking help and pondering abortion. He made them too, and he loves them, and he wants them to live, so he is on our side. You know, to those who much is given, much will be required, and he has blessed me in so many ways, and you know, it's, it's just, you know, life is, all there is, and if we can't stand up and defend life, there's nothing else. You know, it's, it's the most important thing that anybody will ever do, and it, it's worth it. Well, let's really give the Lord a thanks. Thank you, God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.